Hi. Um, in this video I want to do something a little bit different. Um, because I always talk about social anxiety disorder, and in this one I actually have a topic that's a bit different than that, but it is kind of related to it, in a sense. So, um, I want to talk about, um, personality tests and stuff that I've taken. And I want to, like, give you guys a link so that you guys can take it yourself. Because they're really interesting tests. And I think you guys would enjoy doing them. Although, probably a lot of you already know of them. But, oh well. So, the one I wanted to talk about was the MBTI personality test. Um... So, when I took this, I came out like an INFJ, um, although I'm not too sure about the F and J part of it, but this test is really cool because um, it rates you on four different things, like introversion, introversion versus extroversion, the first one, and then there's... Um, Intuitive versus sensing, I think that's what it is. And then there's feeling versus thinking. And then there is judging versus perceiving. So yeah, um, I'll include a link on the side of the video so that you guys can um, go there and take it. But I'll just talk a little bit about it, I guess. Uh, I'm hardly an expert on this. I mean, I do know a lot about it just because I like to research it on the internet, but again, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know. But, so the first one, introverted versus extroverted. I think you guys all know what this is. Um, you know, introverted people, they need time to recharge from social situations. Definitely me. <laughs> um, and then extroverted people, they... Um, <coughs> oh god, should I just cough on camera? I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cold. But, extroverted people are people, like, going to parties and stuff, and they can't get enough of being around other people. In a way, that's how they recharge, by being around other people. My sister would definitely be the description of an extrovert. She always needs to be around people. She always needs to be doing something. Totally the opposite of me. <laughs> but, yeah. That's the difference between introvert and extrovert. What's interesting is that I think just because you have um, social anxiety doesn't necessarily mean that you're introverted. Um, I think in a lot of cases, people with social anxiety might think that they're introverted when really there's an extrovert inside wanting to come out. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell if you're really introverted or extroverted when you have social anxiety. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I'm introvert, but I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> um, okay, the second one. Intuit, intuitive versus um, sensing. Um, I came out an N for this, which is intuitive. And then, you know, there's the S for sensing. Um, if you're intuitive, what that means is, I guess it just means, like, you like to, um, be all theoretical, <laughs> like, people, oh god, I don't want to make generalizations here, but people with that, I think, would be really interested in things like philosophy and stuff, like, abstract concepts, and sensing people, they're, I guess, more down-to-earth, and they're really practical, and they... A big distinction between um, intuitive people and sensing people, I think, is that intuitive people want to know why. Like, they want to know how something works, but the sensing person just cares that it works. If that makes any sense to you guys. So yeah, I am pretty sure that um, I'm intuitive. Um, not that you guys really care, but I, it's easier to talk about this if I'm talking about my own experiences with it. So yeah, um, then there's 
feeling versus thinking. It's not exactly what you'd think. I mean, it's not like f people who get feeling only feel and people who get thinking only think. <coughs> but, I don't know. I think it's like people who are feeling, they... Hmm. They rely more on their emotions to make decisions. They... They care more about not hurting people's feelings than, um, than, you know, the alternative. Um, they really think that people's feelings should be taken into account a lot. I'm not saying that thinking people don't. I'm just saying this seems to be a trait among feeling people. And then with thinking, you, you know, you like to use logic a lot in, in figuring out things. Um, in problem solving, you try to be very detached about it and not um, let your emotions um, get in the way. So yeah, that's kind of the difference between those two. And I don't know, this one is kind of hard to know which I am. Because, <sighs> I don't know, in some ways I'm very much like the thinking person too. I don't know. So, then we have judging versus perceiving. And this one I'm especially confused about which I am. You know, I usually get judging on the test, but it's a very weak judging. Um, judging people, they're supposedly more organized, and they like to have everything planned out, and they always need a plan. Like, whereas perceiving people are more spontaneous, they like to just go with the flow. Yeah, and a lot of the time I think I might be closer to perceiving in that aspect, but I usually get judging. I don't know. Um, so yeah, those are the four letters. Again, the first two are I versus E. The second two are S versus N. Then the third two are F versus T. And the fourth two are... J versus B. So, please take the test on the side and see what you get. And what I'd like is for you guys to like post your results um, in the comments, because that'd be cool. Because then we could see what personality type is the most common among people with social anxiety. Would that be cool? Um, which I think the most common one is like INFP. I don't know. I love sites I've been to. It seems that's the most common among people with social anxiety. So we'll see. I think in my next video I'll say which one won. Um, but you guys don't have to post your results, of course, if you're embarrassed or whatever. I just thought it'd be fun. Ah.